What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be testing out some Linux gaming on the all new X Plus Rival mini gaming PC. So if you're not familiar with this, I did a video, we took a first look at it. It comes pre-installed with Windows, but we've got dual M.2 slots. So I figured I'd go ahead and set this up as kind of a dual boot system so I can have Windows on one side, Linux on the other. For the operating system here, I wanted to get as close as we could to SteamOS. And since we've got a pretty powerful small form factor PC here, I wanted kind of a console experience on this unit. But unfortunately, official SteamOS doesn't support this APU at the time of making this video, so we had to go with Bazite. But luckily, everything here is working with the unit. And as you can see, we've got a very small form factor gaming PC here. Touch button over here to change the RGB. And up front, it's got a performance mode button. With this, we've got three different modes that we can use. Quiet mode, balanced, and performance. Again, like I mentioned, I've got this set up as a dual boot system. So I've got a two terabyte Viper drive over here with Windows 11 Pro installed. And I've got another two terabyte drive with Bazite installed. So I can swap between Windows and Linux at any given time with this system. If you're interested in checking out the first video I did with Windows 11 Pro installed, I'll leave a link to that in the description. But just to give you a quick refresh on this unit, it's powered by the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. So we've got 16 cores, 32 threads based on Zen 5. This will boost up to 5.1 gigahertz. And since we've got the Max Plus 395, we've got that Radeon 8060 Si GPU coming in with 40 compute units based on RDNA 3.5. And this will clock up to 2900 megahertz. This unit comes with 96 gigabytes of RAM, running at 8,000 mega transfers per second. We've got those two 2280 slots on the bottom. It also has Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.2, which, by the way, is working inside of Bazite with no modification. So I've had the system up and running for a little while now. I've already tested out a few games and performance here is great. There's a couple things that I want to show you because uh, when it comes down to it, with an operating system like this, we've got a couple plugins that we could use to control TDP, but we actually don't need it here. One thing that you could use is something like Simple Decky TDP control, but unfortunately it's more geared towards handheld. So with this, we could only do up to 40 watts. And with this Max Plus 395, we definitely want to go much higher than that. Before I show you that, we'll go into settings, system, we're on Bazite 42. Like I mentioned, we can't get official SteamOS installed on this chipset yet. But we've got that AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, 16 cores, 32 threads. This system comes with 96 gigs of RAM. And from here, you can see that our system, a little over 62. And for VRAM, it's dedicated a little over 42. That 8060S here is definitely screaming, and the RAM is running at 8,000 mega transfers per second. As we talked about, we've got the performance button on the front of the unit, and it is working here in this operating system. I'm going to get into Cyberpunk 2077 so I can show you. Checking out the performance overlay in the top left-hand corner, at the very top, we've got our total APU wattage. So it is boosting up to 120 watts right now, which means we're in performance mode. If I press the button one time from performance mode, it's going to drop on down. Obviously, we're not going to get the same kind of performance that we were just seeing, but this does drop down to around 54, 55 watts. If we press it again, it puts us into balanced mode, which uh, does go up to around 85 watts. And then one more time, that's going to bring us up to the sustain 120, but we do have a boost up to 140 with this system. And uh, with this game at ultra, we can do 140 watts with this, but it will back on down to that sustain 120 watt TDP. So yeah, having that up front, really nice. But you know, to tell you the truth, we're plugged into the wall. And for the most part, I'm going to leave this in performance mode. I mean, when I'm using it, it's probably where it's going to stay 99.99% of the time. Now, since we've got Bazite Linux operating system, we also have access to a desktop. So if we open up our menu and go to power, we can switch right over there. And if you've used any other operating system, you can definitely get the hang of using something like this. So right down here, we've got all of our apps. Uh, there's a few really good ones installed here, but if you wanna install any more, obviously, since we're running Linux, you can go through terminal if you want to, but we've also got something known as Bazaar. From here, we can just scroll through, find some uh, standalone emulators right here. We can get anything installed that we want. We've also got our search up here, 
So for instance, if I want to install GIMP, which is a really awesome open source photo editor, we can just go ahead and install it. Once it's installed, we can open it directly from here, or we can head to graphics, open it right here. So if you need a nice open source photo editor that doesn't cost anything, I would highly recommend using GIMP. And if you just wanted to run Steam in kind of desktop mode, we've got it right here. But when it's time to go back to gaming mode, which is the main thing I'm going to be doing with this system here, we've got to return to game mode. But remember, when choosing your download from the Bazite website, you can have it automatically go directly into gaming mode every time. And that's exactly how I have this one set up. But the main reason I want to install Bazite here was for gaming. And I'll tell you, I mean, this Max Plus 395 with some Linux gaming set up correctly does work amazingly. We've got Spider-Man 2 at 1440p very high with IGTI scaling set to balance. With this iGPU, we've got those 40 compute units. And I do consider it a 1440p iGPU, but you will need a little bit of scaling if you're looking to go up to that ultra or very high with most games. Next up, we've got Doom the Dark Ages, and this worked way better than I thought it would. I've been having issues in Linux with this game, I mean, ever since it released, especially on integrated graphics. That's exactly what we have here, albeit we've got the most powerful integrated graphics on the market right now. But just seeing how it's performing at high with XESS, like using it here instead of FSR in Linux with this game, to me, just looks a little better. Checking out Marvel Rivals, we're at 1440p, high settings with FSR set to balanced. We're not testing out any kind of frame generation, and with most of the new games on the market, you can use FSR frame gen if you want to, and it does work really well on the Max Plus 395, but with an online multiplayer game like this, I wouldn't suggest using frame generation. So if you wanted to get any more out of it, which we're seeing an average of around 72 FPS, you could take it down to medium settings and it's still gonna look great. Here's Japanese Drift Master, 1440p high, and there's two more settings that we can go up, but unfortunately it really does fall on its face when we go up to the very high setting and especially the ultra setting here with the game. But, but at high, it does give us a nice balance of performance and fidelity. I also figured we'd go ahead and test out Oblivion Remastered, and at 1440p on this chipset, even inside of Windows, we do need to take it down to medium settings. It's just something about this game here. You could go to 1080, get way more than we're seeing here if you want to, and you could use frame gen, but we're at 1440p medium with FSR set to balanced, and we're getting an average a little over 70 FPS. And finally, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, 1440p, very high, no frame generation. I actually went back to the settings just to make sure it wasn't enabled because we're getting over 100 FPS with this game. With frame gen enabled, we can do up to 140 with it or lock it down to 120 if that's what you want to do, but it totally doesn't need it here. So overall, when it comes to Linux gaming on the X Plus Rival using Bazai, this thing is performing really, really well, and I kind of knew it would. I did mention these things are not cheap, and they definitely aren't. Anything with that Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 is coming in over $1,000, and this one's no different. They only offer one configuration, 96 gigs of RAM, and a 2 terabyte drive. And really, the only thing you can upgrade here is the storage. So for the price of something like this, you could build something that will outperform it, but you're not going to come to this kind of form factor here. And that's really the whole point of this small form factor unit. Every single day, I've been checking the logs for official SteamOS just to see if they updated that message driver so it would work with this uh, APU. We definitely need the driver for that 8060S. We need a driver that works correctly with the 8060S in order to get official SteamOS up and running. And as soon as that's released, because I know down the road it will be, I will do some official SteamOS testing on the Max Plus 395. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in checking out Windows performance on the X Plus Rival, link for that video is down below. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this mini PC, just let me know in the comments. But like always, thanks for watching.